Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video we're going to be trying to improve thermals on this RTX 3070 Ti from EVJ. This is the XC3 Ultra. And while we won't be using thermal pads on the memory modules, we will we'll be using on like the chokes or the VRMs. And we got a cool my GPU copper plate. Now it's more of a you know two-thirds plate, not a full plate like the 3080 or 3090 Ti, but we don't need to cover the whole thing. Now, EVJ did really do a good job on this because there is thermal pads on the back side, uh, you know, connecting the PCB to the back plate as well as one right behind the GPU core. But we don't need to do too much in this. Before we continue and tear this card down, let's do a quick message from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by BT Miners. And on their website, you can sign up for their newsletter to get special offers or coupons, depending on the service or product that they're offering. And their new website does bring a number of elements into the fold. For example, it's mining profitability calculator. Just like ASIC miner value, you can see what is the most profitable miner or cryptocurrency to mine at that time. Their miners range all the way from script algorithm to ETC hash and they also offer repair services for ASICs or miners. Now, obviously, if you have a really old ASIC that parts aren't carried anymore, that might be a little bit harder, but just reach out to their services. See if they have a way to help you repair it. If you can't have your ASICs or your miners in-house with you or at your location, you may want to consider hosting services. Now, while I can't speak to all of these various elements of BT miners because I haven't had one-on-one -on -one experience, do check them out and by supporting them, you're supporting the channel and I couldn't thank you enough. But let's get back to the video. Now to tear down this GPU, honestly, uh, the screws, you don't need to do the two by the front IO. There are little nuts kind of holding those on. Uh, that kind of holds the back plate on. But every other screw on here, obviously the four main around the core. Uh, and then we have one, two under the sticker, three, four, five, six. All of those actually go into the cooler. So we need to remove those in order to separate the cooler from the PCB. Then we'll be able to get in there, remove the thermal pads and replace the copper plate. So let's go ahead and start with that. So I knew this was going to happen. Uh, of course, the thermal pads ripped, which is why we're going to replace it with some thermal pads from GP risers, the one over the inductors here. Because this GPU got so hot shard for the sake of shaking the camera, the thermal pads kind of adhere to the memory module. So we need to clean all that off, scrape it off. Uh, there is a thermal pad on the cooler that goes over these inductors, but we don't need to worry about that because there's a good one right there in the middle. So. That one's good, but the ones along the side here definitely need to be replaced. Uh, looks like this one is, I wanna say 1.5 mil. And then on the inductors, looks like one mil. Ba basically, once you have all the screws done off, you're pulling from this IO side and you're kind of very carefully pulling up. Uh, because of how hot this thing got, obviously it caught, had some issues or had gave us a problem. Um, but as you're pulling up, you're going to have two connectors that are going to be in the way. The LED connector right there in front of you and then the three fans. I basically got my finger in there, got enough in there to where I can pop that LED connector off and then rotated it like this to where they're side by side and then was able to get my hands in there to undo these three fan connectors. So now that that's all done, it's just a matter of cleaning up. I'll do that off camera. Um, now you can see I probably went a little bit overboard with the thermal paste on the cold plate. Basically, I did a bead down each memory module. If you look very carefully, if I could get it to focus, down each memory module, just a straight line down. 
and then a little mix and match design up top just to spread it out and use the heat sink evenly. Obviously now it's time to put everything back together. And I really wanna see how the thermal improvement is. We got some uh, Cryonaut Extreme on the CPU and then some regular Cryonaut using on the memory modules and everything like that. So let me go ahead and start putting this back together for us. Obviously to get even tension when it's starting a counterclockwise or counter sink pattern, just a couple of turns, left a little bit, make sure it seats, a couple of turns, just make sure you're not cross-setting anything. Most of y'all should know that, there we go, got a nice little pop on that one. Obviously. I want to do start some of the back plates, screws, just to get even tension, make sure everything is threaded in. Let's put it back together. Just gonna finish this up and let's go see what the thermal results was before and after are. We'll meet you over on the main computer. Been testing out the 3070 Ti for quite some time now really putting it through its paces and the temperature improvement is pretty good. Now before I show you some charts, I want to show you what I got maxing out this damn thing it's pretty hot so on neoxia right and you can see my power limit set at 75 i put a little bit of core not too much mem at it right because you want to find that balance and i know you can overclock a little bit more we're drawing about 220 watts just about out of this system and look at the temperatures right so the core hit 83 almost a high of 85 and then the hotspot temperature hit a high of 94. And then look at the memory. It hit a high of 108, but the average was around 106, 105. That's the hottest I have ever seen this card. And we know that T-junction on GDDR6 55 5X is 10, uh, 110, right? So you always want to stay away from that. You really want to stay out of 100. The max, I would say, running 24-7 is 94, 96, somewhere in there. But we know with these 3000 series GPUs, the memory can get quite toasty. Now, I want to show you one more thing. So dual mining has become very popular. So I got a couple of uh, screenshots here. So dual mining, we can see that the uh, the system, again, the memory is hitting 102, not where I want it to be. Uh, the hotspot and core are okay still. And then again, memory hitting 100. And then again, 112. Memory hit 112. If you look right below me, you can see it, 112, man. This is this is absolutely crazy that these cars can do it. Now, keep in mind, my system, the Corsair, I think it's the 500D, something like that, um, is not very airflow efficient. So it is very toasty. And then in a mining tent, it's even toastier. And we see that because when we look at the hive uh, setup, memory temperatures hit 96, right? And look at all the errors at the top. All of these errors are because of PCI ID 04 colon 00. .0. The, t the 3070 Ti is making the system constantly restart, driving me up the wall, which is what led me to make this adjustment. Now, if we pull up some after temperatures, and again, I will show you some charts here in a minute. Let me go ahead and pull it up. This is Neoxia Max. All right, so the same thing as before, but we're not getting anywhere near that. Look at that drop in temperature. So 76 was the high, average of 73. And then dual mining, here we go. We got, uh, let's see, memory temperature, a high of 80, average of 76. And then the hotspot temperature and core temperature, which I have three graphs for each of those sections, um, have dropped significantly. Now the catch 22 on this is gonna be that when you add this copper plate, you're going to have an increase in core temperature, right? Because now you're very, you're, you're dissipating that, that memory heat through the copper cold plate on the top of the GPU heatsink, uh, rather than the back side of the GPU through the back plate. 
And so that's going to heat up your core a little bit, but it's not going to be so much. You're going to be able to regulate that heat, obviously, with fan speed, um, you know, setting it to whatever comfortable level you want. Now, looking at the charts, here's what we got. So memory max. Now, this is this is more of an average, right? Because I, I didn't put the 112, the 108, 110. I just kind of averaged it out, you know, whether I was dual mining or not, uh, more memory intensive algorithms. The GPU memory was hitting a max of 106 consistently and then a average of 89 depending on the day you know hot times during the middle of the day cooler times during the evening but after the copper cold plate uh from cool my gpu we dropped the memory temperatures down to a max of 80 and then an average of 76 that is a huge decrease right so copper is very efficient at dissipating that that thermal heat um there are other metals and other components or other materials that are much more efficient but it's just applying it to a you know a 24 7 day situation 24 7 seven days a week situation the cool my gpu does it now copper shims will do it as i showed you in previous videos um but it's going to be up to you to pick and choose now cool my gpu makes it just for your particular model check with their website but that is such a great improvement especially for someone in a hot environment like myself now on the core with more core intensive algorithms we saw a max of 90, an average of 85, but after the plate, we saw a max of 73 and a average of 69, so under 70 degrees on the core. But the hot spot, which is also a section that concerns me when we start getting those high temps, is we were getting near 100. We, we did peak over 101 on one test, uh, but the max average throughout all tests was 99, average of 95 on the GPU hotspot, and then after... We hit 88 on the max and 81 as an average. And even doing some mining today, if I get out of your way here, we can see in hardware info, we see only a max of 80, an average of 75 on the memory, a max of 87 on the hotspot, average of 80, and then on the core, a max of 72, an average of 67. So it's definitely a huge improvement over what's there. And even the XC3 has good cooling on it. It's just getting that. Now you could do a relatively decent job with good thermal pads, right? The stock thermal pads that EVJ and other companies ship with get the job done. It keeps the card within spec. But if you're pushing the cards really hard and mining is kind of pushing the cards out of spec, you're going to run thermal issues and you're going to have to make a decision. So thermal pads would be a good stop gap. Somebody asked me if they should do it if they're a first timer. I said, no, don't do copper shims, copper plate mods until you're very comfortable working on cards, tearing it down, putting it back together, just use thermal pads, and then maybe revisit it in the future if you are in a hot tropical environment like myself. But that's some pretty uh, decent gains from another cool my GPU copper custom plate that I bought specifically for my model using their website very easily. The price is a bit high. Yes, you could get copper shims on Amazon, but you just need to weigh out the pros and cons and see if it's really worth it for you. But that's going to do it for today's video. Please do me a favor on the way out. Hit the like button. Make sure to get subscribed. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date as well as check out links in the description uh, to various uh, affiliates and sponsors to help support the channel like today's video sponsor. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.